Hey, it's the podcast guy. Sutton United Talk Time on Podcast. It's the Sutton Podcast. And there it is! Sutton United of the GM Vauxhall Conference have put down first division Coventry City, winners of the FA Cup themselves less than two years ago. And what a moment to enjoy for the fans of this Surrey side. They've had their moments before, but never won like this. But the whistle goes down. Delight for Sutton United. Sutton United for the National League are through to the last 16 of the FA Cup. No longer English football's perennial non-league club. A 123-year crescendo reaches a new peak for Sutton United, who are promoted to the Football League for the first time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sutton United Talk Time on Podcast. Joining me tonight live on Facebook and YouTube and all the rest, oh Twitter, yeah, obviously that's where most of you watch it, is Dan from Gandamonium. Hi Dan, how are you? Evening mate, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Um, first things first, obviously um, John's injury is an absolute signal and hope he makes not just a speedy but a very a very strong recovery because that, mm-hmm. that, that was not a nice one. Um, how, how how much did we know when you were in the ground? Was it was it immediately obvious, or it was immediately <laughs> obvious? It was something it, he was hurt. Um, it looked an innocuous kind of coming together between him. Mm. I think it was Kobe and one of their was lads Kobe. was there. But it was it just on halfway? And as he came through that kind of little bundle of a challenge, he went down. And you know how footballers do when they're injured. That instant kind of, yeah, like the the arm going up and like there was no rolling around or any you know the theatrical kind of stuff you get. So I mean, what was weird was the ref looked straight at it and let them play on. Mm. Yeah, he'd, he'd been so fussy all night, which was weird. But yeah, it was you could tell he'd hurt himself. You know, yeah, it was, it was it was a bad whack. Um, but where he had he, he was there kind of with his hands in his sort of lower leg. So we, we thought, well, it's at least a dislocate. He's got to at least have dislocated it or it's a bad, bare minimum, a bad ligament injury. Mm. But yeah, we found out fairly quickly. It was once they yeah. obviously strapped him all up and stuff, it was it was a busted leg. Yeah, it, it became quite obvious that the amount of people around him and, and um, Matt and everyone has, has already said um, brilliant and uh, response and thanks to all the um, mm. Stevenage medical staff who were on health yeah, as well. Was, um, I mean, they were like, Four or five people from our bench and there's pretty much on straight yeah. away once the ref stopped yeah. the game. So yeah, it was yeah, it was it was dealt with remarkably quickly, we thought. <laughs> yeah, so as I say, hopefully a strong recovery. I know everyone says speedy recovery, but I, I deliberately say strong because that's more important yeah, than those <laughs> coming back quickly. Um, speedy speedy recoveries don't tend <laughs> to happen with that kind of injury, sad. No. Um I did also check in with Kobe today and um he appreciated the fact because he must be feeling I mean it's it's a bad enough thing if it happens to an opponent that you've challenged, yeah. but then for a teammate, as a mate, as, as someone you're, you're, you're friends with, you I know mean, them, yeah, right? he, he was he was clearly distressed mm. in the art immediately afterwards. He was clearly upset about it. So it's one of those things. It was you know, it's it's not really there was no malice. You know, Kobe was just there trying it, to clear the ball out on the halfway line, and it was two players going in for the ball. Unfortunately mm. for us, John going in for the ball this direction and Kobe going this direction. Yeah. Um, it was one of the things that that, that could happen 999,000 times and nothing ever come of it. But yeah, um, this exactly one, that. it was terrible. Um, but on the game itself, I do remember, I didn't actually get to watch the first half, but um, the... Uh, That's bit. <laughs> yeah, I did see from everyone's comments of, <laughs> oh, this ain't, this ain't too bad. Um, until... You confused me a bit because you were like the first 15 minutes, but I'm sure it was about 30 minutes. Yeah, it was, I, I don't know why. I, I think I meant to put first 25 and just hit mm. the wrong button on the tweet. Um, but yeah, I, the first half was was all right. I mean, we didn't we didn't cause them too many problems in attack, but defensively and you know, the rest of the squad we kept a shape really well. We worked hard, you know, we we kind of frustrated them a little bit. Um they didn't really create anything of note 
prior to the goal, really. I mean, mm. they got forward and stuff, and they, to be fair to them, they were a good side, they attacked with purpose, but they just that, that final ball wasn't quite there for them. And it looked, you mm. know, we were we were doing quite a good job. And then <laughs> we didn't mark a bloke who was on the edge of the 18 yard box and yeah. still headed it. And passed our six foot nine goalkeeper as well. So and, uh, and what looked to be about four four other players it went past yeah. on the way through as well. Just, yeah. I haven't actually watched it back. I haven't watched any of it back because I'm I don't no. Know I'm it's avoiding it's that yeah. as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, apart apart from, apart from the goal, which is obviously quite important in football, um, most people I was seeing was were saying we, we were playing better. The performance was yeah. better. Um, oh yeah, we performance were quite confident. Compared to Saturday, the performance was miles better. Um, yeah. Just our, just our shape and just general, you know, the way we just carried ourselves on the pitch was just so much better. We were a lot more composed. Um, just, yeah, we, we weren't creating a lot up front, but we, were, we, we looked fine. I mean, we were in the game, um, not in any real danger until we were. <laughs> well, then, obviously, half-time is, is normally a nice little thing where Matt and, and, and the management team sort out any of the things that have come as a bit of a surprise to them and we get to come out second half nice and strong and turn things around which went well for two minutes um, <laughs> so at that point were you just like oh god here we go again or um it again it was weird in that the first minute or so you thought all right we're at least going to get the same again and then suddenly they had this one attack where for about it and it, it it came down this flank and then we cleared and then the ball got looped back in and there was a couple of phases where we just it just felt like we just stood and watched and gave them every one of their players about five yard of space to do mm -hmm. what they wanted to do and the guy popped the ball in and even that was the, the guy won the header lewis has made the, a decent save from the you know quite close range header yeah. And everyone was just stood watching the nine in acres of space to thrash it in. And it was just, it was one of the ones, if, if you do watch the video back, you'll see when he thumps it in, everyone in a green shirt stood there with their arms out going, what's going yeah, on? Who's picking him up? Because you've switched off, lads. It was just, it was just a weird passage of play. And yeah, so, from that point on, it was game over. Yeah. So I was going to mention that. And again, you know, I don't like digging people out or anything like that, but there's now two goals that we've conceded after Lewis has made a save and it's been palmed almost straight out to one of their players. Um, you've obviously seen him more than me because he's mostly been away games. Is that something he, he does palming it out or does he? I wouldn't, I, to be honest. Well, just I, really unlucky. I actually, I actually feel really sorry for Lewis since he's come mm -hmm. in because yeah. he's come in, he's replaced Jack, who to be fair was doing really well and he's just out mm -hmm. injured. Lewis signed, and I think everyone got the feeling he signed as the number one, mm -hmm. really. Um, and then since he's come in, I'd say probably three of the back four have just disappeared practically in front of him. Yeah. He's had so little cover. He's, he's probably had to make more saves in his three games so far than Jack had the rest of yeah. the whole of the rest of the season. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's. I know it's. It, I know it's easy to blame a goalkeeper because you've conceded three there, two at mm -hmm. two at Salford, two against Salford, and the one on Saturday. But I mean, Saturday, if it wasn't for him, we'd have lost by about three. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm. I'm sure he's probably disappointed that he's not not came more out. But it, it, you can't blame the keeper. Yeah. No, I mean. <laughs> On, on that, I'm not, I'm not trying to blame you. I was just wondering about this palm, this thing palming out. Mm. But yeah, I do remember years and years ago, and this is where um, I'm going to show age, um, where Kevin Keegan was in charge of Newcastle, and they'd just beaten, I think, West Ham, something like 6 0. And he came out ranting about Les Seeley being the absolute man of the match because he made about 50 saves. And it was like, <laughs> people are going to look at this and say 6 0, blame the keeper. But oh my God, we would have scored loads and loads more. So mm. it isn't always the score that, that, that reflects the game. Yeah. Um, but one, one, player, one thing I was thinking um, is Donovan's stock seems to have gone up since he's been suspended because people now sort of realise maybe what he does. <laughs> um, Charlie um, didn't grab his chance, did he? 
I I think one of the things with Donovan is he and Omar pretty much since from the moment Donovan joined, like back in the National League, hmm. he struck me as a player who he and Omar seemed to always seem to link up really well. Um, and they just seem to understand what each other is going to do and where they're going to be and everything like that. Whereas when Donovan's not there, it you notice it because, I don't know, someone like if it's Charlie or Killian or someone like that, maybe they're just not either not close enough or they're too far away from Omar or they're not making the right run. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, again, Charlie's another player I feel sorry for because we've given him nothing. Last night gave him now uh, the 20 minutes he had, 15, 20 mm. minutes he had at Gillingham. I, I, I think he touched the ball in the last minute, oh, okay. you know, because, well, yeah, he he was just basically running channels last night, harrying like, like Donovan does, but just for no reward. We gave him no yeah. supply. So yeah. he could be the next Erling Haaland. No one will ever know. No one knows for him Like you said. You know, if... We're not giving him a chance. If he came to Sutton, we'd soon sort him out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you'd have you would have like eight goals in four games, business. It'd be yeah. forty games and eight goals. So um, yeah, I don't yeah, it's just so there's been obviously lots and lots of talk about how terrible things are and how awful it is. I mean, not being the happy camper, but we massively overachieved last season. Yeah. And this season He's probably realistically still overachieving in, in 14th. Um, things aren't looking great. The injury list is looking worse and worse and worse. And I I think this match is Matt's worst um, run. Um, there was a, in his first season, we including that infamous Billericke game where we lost four on, on the spin. Um, so this sort of matches that, that run. Um, and there was comments about how the recruitment has been um, in the summer, which I find a bit odd because Sam, if you look at Sam Hart, he didn't miss many games through injury the last couple of years. Yeah, um, and, hasn't kicked, and barely has, has barely kicked a ball for us this year. Yeah, since so he joined, you, so you wouldn't have said you're taking on a player with an injury risk. Yeah, um, but something's happened. Um, we don't know what. Um, it's, got to remember sometimes these footballers are private as well as <laughs> our property. Um, so something's happened. He, he he's clearly in around the squad because he did. He was on the sort of open day thing that um, Donovan went to because he was suspended yesterday as well. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, um, yeah. So he's going to be in and around. Um, but some of the others. I mean, when Kwame came on yesterday. He almost seemed to be trying to get booked to prove he was on the pitch because <laughs> he was sort of he putting did, himself yeah, he was, about a bit. Uh, putting himself about a bit is probably the right word. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, he, he, I, I, whether he just wanted to, maybe he just thought that we'd not imposed ourselves up top enough, so he just wanted to kind of make his mark. I don't know, yeah. Um, but it's one of the move on we we lost. Um, we're gonna get a few of those games every yeah, now. And I then. mean, I, I think most people generally thought until the goal that the, it was it was better than Saturday, and mm -hmm. they're a much, much better side than Gillingham. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I'll be honest, I, I went into the game not expecting much, certainly not in a result way, yeah. um, just wanted a better performance <laughs> on Saturday and something to at least, uh, build on, but mm. yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, the, the injury list is, is horrendous. And I said this last season, the, the magic pitch, which was terrible for players, knees and injury problems. We didn't have any injuries at all. Yeah. And this season again, some people have questioned whether the, the, the fitness in the training, but all these all the injuries seem to have happened on the pitch um last year and, and this year, apart from Sam, which is we don't know. Uh, mm. but Ben was on the pitch. Ali, something happened on the pitch. I think Andy said he was sure something happened a few weeks previous. And yeah, I think Ali was more uh he probably twinned something mm. and they didn't pick it up. Yeah, and he's played on with it, and it, then that's what's, you know, he's played a couple of games, and then in training it's let go. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, even even back when we we had the three G, I think we had two ACL injuries, didn't we? 
mm-hmm. with uh, Ross Warner and who else got one? Um, Brown <laughs> got one me. as well, didn't he? And they were both, and both of them got them on grass pitches. Yeah, playing on oh, grass. Tommy as well. Tommy. Tommy Wright was on yeah. a grass pitch. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, we had three ACLs yeah. in like eighteen months, and they're all yeah. on grass surfaces. Yeah, so absolutely. I, yeah, they're more. Yeah, yeah, the more going to that three G stuff again. Dang, dangerous that stuff. Um, but yeah, so it's a difficult one because obviously we've now heard that Harry has been playing for a hernia, which might explain some of his performances have been a little bit not Harry. Yeah, he dropped. He he didn't look himself on Saturday. Mm-hmm. It was a definite drop off and. He, he wasn't quite as all action in the kind of game or two before yeah. that. So we just thought it might be a knock and he was just being Harry, you know, he's playing with a, I don't know, a bit of bruising or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, then someone was saying on Tuesday night that it was, uh, it's he's been playing through a hernia. So it's like, well, that's, that's going to need an op. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, again, it just shows, I said this a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about Joe Kizzy having cramp, but he should be fine for Saturday. It's just like, they, 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 what they do is madness. I mean, you and I, Hernia, that's it. I'm, I can't, I ain't moving. That's it. I'm on the sofa. Um, but he's playing, uh, well, three games, I think he played with it. So, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, it's going to make the old fan hub lineups a little bit easier for us because um, there isn't going to be many left. people left. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but in all seriousness, we, we've got a bit of an issue, not even necessarily in, in midfield, but a fullback because Rob can't. Be expected to play every single match. Um, well, he's. I think. I think we've just got to rely on Callum Hart getting back to fitness mm-hmm. within the next game or two, um, and then maybe we can swap. Either he can play, um, you know, yeah, full back, and Rob can go into midfield. To be fair, I'd I'd quite like to see a bit more of Adam Lovett. He, I mean, there's obviously, know, he's there. He's a midfielder. Yeah, we don't see him in training, but when he's come in, no one's ever gone away going, "Yeah, he's 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 not at the levels." I mean, um, he only he only had a he only had basically injury time to kind of uh, play last night because John got injured with like a minute or two to go. So he had like 50, a fifteen minute run out that he wasn't going to get. And, you know, and he he buzzed around. He made himself busy. Got himself in the right areas. Um, I, I've never seen, I've not seen anything from him that makes me think that he's not good enough. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if, you know, if, sometimes players like him, this is the way their opportunities come about. Yeah. Well, it happened for Ali last year. So, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Who knows? Okay. So, we'll, we'll draw a line. I'm not going to do the player of the day because I don't really think it's that appropriate. And I think you'd struggle to pick out four anyway. So, um, <laughs> If there is going to be a award, it's going to be a sympathy award to, to John, but um, I'm not, not going to do it today, so um, we'll skip that. Um, we will now move on to the Tramley match at the weekend. Um, a couple of things before then. Um, you may well have seen the, the tweets, but if not, look, look for them. I might sort of copy them in again if I remember, sorry. Um, but um, Dave is doing his... 24 miles in 24 hours or something like that, where he's, he's literally got to run a mile every hour, including the match time. So he's going to have to try and negotiate getting out of the ground, doing his mile and then coming back in again, or somehow doing laps of the pitch. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure how he'll be doing that, but um, that's for him to work out. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Sutton United Talk Time on podcast, the Sutton Podcast. If you are new to the show, hello, and you are very welcome. Hope you enjoy what we do. It's a very simple format. We get a few people on to talk about the game that's just gone, and then we preview the next game coming up. We are available on most podcast platforms where you can listen, rate, and review. If you find that we're not on your preferred platform, please let me know and I'll sort that for you. If anyone would like to support the podcast, you can find out how with more information on the website, which is www.suttonpodcast.com. And there's a tab where you can find out how to be a guest as well. Please find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok with the username at Sutton Podcast. Every like, follow, and share is really appreciated. Hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Joining us as well to sort of preview the tramway match is Ant. Hello, Ant. How are you? Hi, am I doing good, mate? How are you? Very good, thank you. Um, very kindly, Ant has joined early on, and he didn't disconnect while we were talking rubbish. So that's it's always <laughs> a bonus. Um, but Ant, I've, I've sort of 
you report on Tranmere, you're not not a supporter. Um, but Correct, essentially, yes. we, we kind of want to know a little bit about you, a bit about um, what qualifies you to talk about Tranmere. Um, essentially, and you're going to love this, <laughs> we want to ask, who are you? I was, I was not expecting that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I work for the Liverpool Echo and the World Globe, the two local newspapers uh, on Merseyside, and I uh, pretty much do most of, if not all, of the Tramia content for everyone. So uh, that's pretty much why I'm qualified to sit here and, and talk about the team, I think. Excellent. It's far I'll, more I'll qualified than I am, to be fair. <laughs> I go to the home and matches and... Likewise. <laughs> yeah, I talk rubbish. <laughs> And then people go, oh, you do Sutton United content? Come on, us. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ask someone good. Um, so how long have you been sort of um, reporting on Dramia? Uh Funnily enough, actually, it's my one-year anniversary on Saturday. I knew that. You see, that this is why I plan for you to come on today mm. <laughs> to celebrate. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah. Do you do the away games as well? Or yes, I will be there on yeah. Saturday, yeah. Excellent, lovely. You'll get to see the. Have you been to Sutton before? I've not. No. No. Ah, oh, you love it. <laughs> uh, well, I've been to some interesting grounds in League Two, so. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm you sure. have not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess we'll see. Our ground is a non-league ground, and we love it. The only thing we're disappointed about is they have now closed slash condemned the old toilets that used to be at the away end. They were they were a thing of. Utter beauty. <laughs> as, as, as long as I can get myself a cup of tea at half time, I'll be satisfied. Oh no, you're, you're, you if you're in the are you are you do you do you sit in the press box? Yeah, 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 you'll yeah, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you'll be fine for a cup of them. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not bigging them up, but the 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 club are they they're proper. They 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 do, they do things right. Um <laughs> we've had lots of journalists go, oh, okay. <laughs> We're not a league club in the football league but they, mm. they, they look after you properly they're, they're, they're really good um but how's the season gone for Tranmere so far what, what's the highs and lows what it's uh, to use a football cliche it's been a tale of two halves really like the first half of the start of the season was abject i think to say it kindly like it, things started pretty terribly for the team this season it just looked like they had nothing going on for them the team was loose, open at the back, couldn't score a goal. But now that they've sort of found this defensive stability in the last three games, three games, one nil wins in a row now. And I am now that they're looking solid at the back again, because it's, it's been a trademark of Mickey Mellon teams in the past as well. I think that it's, it's really going to be important that they keep up that defensive stability because the forward players, they really, really have struggled this year. Yeah, because you had... The guy on loan from Liverpool last year, has he come back? or? Uh, yeah, so Paul Glatzel, uh, he was yeah. on loan, tore, tore his hamstring around March time, oh, uh, right. had to go back to Liverpool, came back on mm -hmm. deadline day, uh, then 13 minutes into his second Tramia debut, he tore his hamstring again. Oh, mm -hmm. It's the pitch. You need, a, you need a free G pitch. <laughs> <laughs> so... What were the expectations heading into the season? Were, were, was, were, were there hopes of playoff or was it just um, the stability? I think if, if you asked me this question in January, I'd say that probably the expectation for the season would be to, to be playing League One football. But um, now it's, it's a strange one because the, in the summer, the entire squad changed again for the second year in a row. And it, it's looking like squeaking into the playoffs will probably be the best that this group of players can achieve this season because it is it's the third youngest team in in the league and they are it's full of developing players who just simply do not have the experience in league football to be able to consistently put together wins in a league like league two where things are always so physical and so demanding on the body when you've not got the yards under you as a footballer and you haven't been through all of the different types of seasons that you can go through it's hard to be able to as a young player come into the team and know exactly how to approach every different situation and that's really going to be the downfall of Tramia this season they're going to it, it, 
the manager, he keeps saying that it is a work in progress and it, it looks like that from week in, week out. That sounds like that we get a chance to hopefully bully them a little bit on Saturday, Dan, do you reckon? I hope so. Well, <laughs> well, scoring right, goals Tram- is still going to be uh, going to be our problem, I think. The thing is, Tramia Rovers away from home is an interesting one because in the last fortnight, Tramia have won as many games away from home as they have in the rest of 2022. <laughs> so right. Before, <laughs> the, before, before the team played Salford, they had won two games away from home in 2022. Once against Crawley Town in January and then against Leighton Orient on the last day of last season. And now they've beaten Salford uh, and um, Walsall away from home back to back. Uh, but still, 1-0 wins, both of them. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, 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 as Dan just said, we're not we're not scoring. I think we we let Gillingham score a goal after 10 hours of football, so that's very nice <laughs> of us. We let Stephen each score three. After, I don't think they've scored three in a league game for, for ages. So we, we, we're very generous, um, mm-hmm. but I think that will change. I think there will be some work going on quite quite a bit at the moment. Um, yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised to see if we maybe throw Pierre in on Saturday. Yeah. Just give us a little bit, something different yeah. at the back, because... Yeah, the the the, the, two, the centre, our centre back pairing is just. It's been okay, but it's just Louis and Kobe just haven't quite convinced the whole time. I don't think something's not right there. So I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe Kobe drops out this week and well, I, if uh, Aaron Pierre comes in. Obviously, we know about my football knowledge, but I had some memory that Kobe could play holding midfield as well. Um, now I'm not sure if he's got too sort of bulky for that because he's he's, he's he's clearly been using the weights in the gym. Yeah. But um, I do have some memory when he first came in that they said he can play holding mid as well. Um, but I thought, you know, when we're going through this phase of the late goals, why didn't we stick... And again, I'm not questioning Matt because obviously I don't know anywhere near as much as him. But why couldn't we stick Pierre on for the last five minutes just to have that organisational skill that he, he would he would bring um but maybe it'd be just too disruptive i guess yeah, yeah. If, maybe matt doesn't want to break his uh, yeah. pairing that late in the game maybe maybe it's yeah. more disruptive than what he gets what he gets out of it yeah um so just to sort of wrap up how, how do we think the game's gonna go <laughs> it's gonna depend on the team that we got available <laughs> the weather and all sorts of other things so uh i'll go with you Ant, first well, before we started uh, the podcast, Mike, you you talked to me about how Sutton have backed the rigid four four two uh, for the foreseeable, foreseeable past, and honestly, that's now how Tramia Rovers are playing as well. So it's going to be, uh, for lack of a better term, the battle of of Brexit. If you want, if you want to go with that, because it'll, it, the, that that's the kind of game that I'm expecting. Uh, I think Tramia will set up uh, defensively solid. They. Uh, Jordan Turnbull, Danil Simeu, both didn't play in midweek in the, in the Papa John's Trophy. Uh, both fullbacks didn't play either. It's, it's going to be a fresh team. Everybody's going to be very well rested. Uh, and But I, again, the goal of a Mickey Mellon team is to make sure they don't concede first before worrying about scoring goals. And uh, yeah, that, that's how I see the game going on Saturday. I think it'll be a, a, a grueler, possibly even a nil-nil. <laughs> I hate predicting nil-nil. Yeah, Dan. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to divert too far from that. I don't think it's going to be much different. I think both sides are going to. I know. I know. Mickey sets his sides up to be defensively solid. He always has done. Whenever we've played Tranmere, they've always been. We've always seemed to play Tranmere when they've been on a good run defensively. Um, so, yeah, it's going. And when we're not the most prolific at, in front of goal, I just hope we can find that home form that we've been showing a bit more and, and, and get a get our noses in front. Um but I suppose it also depends who's fit. Mm-hmm. That that actually that might be our, our best option that Mickey Mickey Mellon won't know who we're gonna field. <laughs> certainly in midfield. So <laughs> suddenly Matt turns around and goes, right, well the team I've got available, we're gonna be playing three, three, four. <laughs> and everyone's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, so, I think it will. I think it'll be. It'll be tight. A lot of, I think it'll be a draw or a, a very narrow one 0 win. Which yeah. way? I don't want to call. I, I I don't think I've ever said this before, but I think yes, a nice tight 
game and keeping it tight and making it as boring as hell just to get this this run of four. I think ended. I think I, I think a nil nil. I think most people on our end would take a nil nil and yeah. just say right, clean sheet, got a point, Move. little bad run, little mini bad run sorted. We can gives us something yeah. to build on. Yeah. So there you go, folks. Under one point five goals. <laughs> <laughs> Which means we all know it's going to be it's going to be five all or something stupid. <laughs> I'd rather not. That makes my life hell. <laughs> yeah, you've got to write down lots of story. notes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you look you look and watch the highlights. It's fine. <laughs> at, least I, at least I can wait till the following day and watch the highlights back. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, well, thank you very much, gents, for your time. Um, it's it's been great to speak my to you guys. Um, if you see us in the fan zone on Saturday, and say come say hi, and we'll kind of look blankly because I'm an old man and I'm blind, so I'll be like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know you, um, absolutely. So, but yeah, thank you for your time and good luck with um, keeping track of all the goal scorers. <laughs> Saturday. Thanks, mate. Pleasure's all mine, Dan. I'll see you on Saturday. Cheers, mate. See you Saturday. Cheers. For time. Thanks a lot. Um, thanks for listening and see you all soon. Bye bye. One, two, three.